It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with certified financial planners Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being here, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners on the program. And with me in the KFG studios, my business partners and fellow CFPs, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. The Roth conversion is a popular tax planning strategy and one that may even make sense for you to consider doing as part of your year-end tax planning. But it's not one size fits all, and there are circumstances when you should not do a Roth conversion. We're going to hit that and much more on this hour of the Wise Money Show. I get accused of a lot of things. One is that my middle name is Roth, so we're talking about that today. I also get accused (laughs) of talking in run-on sentences, just nonstop. And Kevin, I think it. I think you're up to the task. That was one sentence. One Very good. I liked it. Well, it Mike, great. it's not one sentence fits all. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. Got it. If you have a question for the program, we'd love to hear from you. Hopefully, you're doing tax planning. We're helping with that. And and if you need some assistance, call Texas five seven four two 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 thousand. That's five seven four two 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 thousand. Online wisemoneyshow.com is where you can find us. And then all over social media, wherever you're at, we are there as well. Search the Wise Money Show. Should you do a Roth conversion this year? You've got until 1231 to do it. I I do feel like, and guys, maybe this is anecdotal, but I feel like more people are asking themselves that question and Mm -hmm. considering it, which I think that's fantastic. You know, we preach every single week on the Wise Money Show. You need to be proactive about your your tax planning strategy. Um, But it's it's not just asking the question. The key is knowing whether you should or not, mm-hmm. whether you should do it. So we're going to get into not just yeah, maybe times you should, but we're going to lay out five times when you should not do a Roth conversion. But first, what in the world is it? What's a, what's a Roth conversion? I'll tell you what it's not. A Roth conversion is not a contribution. There are two ways to get money into your Roth IRA. One is to contribute and you've got a certain coupon, a certain amount per year that you can contribute to a Roth IRA. And that is limited based on contribution limits, what your income is and other things. So I can contribute and get money into a Roth IRA. Um, set, think 7000 or 8000 depending on the year and, and contribution limits. Or I can convert. And what does that mean? It means I can take IRA money, traditional IRA money, and convert it to a Roth IRA. And there's something that happens when I convert it from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. Any money in that traditional IRA that's never been taxed is going to be taxed at the moment that it enters the Roth IRA door. So the only money that can go into a Roth IRA is after-tax money. So that, therefore, I take pre-tax money from my traditional IRA, I convert it to a Roth IRA, and in the process, I pay taxes. Yeah, I think it's an important concept that most people don't spend any time thinking about. Uh, Maybe you've not thought about your traditional IRA or even your 401k in a long time, but those traditional retirement accounts, those are tax postponement tools. They're delaying a tax that is going to be paid at some point out there in the future. And as long as the money is staying in those accounts, it's hopefully growing because you're investing it well. And as it's growing, you're avoiding the tax, but not forever. You're postponing the tax. Eventually, you have to pay the tax on the contributions that have never been taxed and the growth that's never been taxed. And the question is, well, when do you pay that tax? And the beauty of a Roth conversion is that they're The the government is essentially giving you an opportunity to choose that timing before you even get to retirement. Before the Roth existed, your timing was, well, when I get to retirement and I start drawing off of my traditional IRA, that's when I'm going to pay the tax. It will be treated as income to me as it comes out, and I'll pay tax on it as if I had earned it in a paycheck or something. And that, that's different with the Roth IRA now because you have the ability, while you're still working or whether you're uh, maybe even in retirement, you can choose to move money out of that traditional IRA, as Kevin was describing, pay the tax on it in between and let it land in a Roth account. Why would you want to do that? 
because from that day moving forward, as long as the money is in the Roth IRA and it's still invested, maybe in the exact same investments as what it was in the traditional IRA, as long as it's investing and growing, it's not growing with a tax delay, it's growing tax free. Yeah. And it's one of the most powerful tools when, when you can give lots of time for it to grow tax free, it becomes extra powerful because the compounding is building without an IOU to the government attached to it. So if you think tax rates are going up, if you think they're going to create new taxes, if you think the market's going up, if you think your income's going up, these are all reasons to consider a Roth conversion. I, I would add on to that. You want to do RMD planning, required minimum distribution, when you're forced at a certain age to be drawing money out of your pre-tax retirement accounts, whether you need it or not, that can sometimes push you into a higher tax bracket, cause you to, to pay more taxes on Social Security and whatnot. And, and having dollars in a Roth, there's no required minimum distribution. And even if they do create one out there in the future, which I think is possible, even when you take money out of the Roth, it doesn't create more tax. So, so lots of reasons. You can see why I get the nickname. Like lots of reasons to contribute to the Roth. We heard our our team at KFG. We love. I mean, we're geeks. Okay, you can tell already. Uh, we love learning new things. We love uh, getting into the weeds and and being challenged in some fringe concepts, ideas. And we were at a uh, a seminar a few weeks ago, a few months ago now. Gosh, and uh, a, a sort of the the IRA tax planning authority was on the stage. And he said with absolute conviction, it was in absolutes, you should be doing Roth conversions. You should be paying tax even up to the highest tax brackets. He was so convinced tax rates were going up, so convinced that the Roth strategies, whether Roth contributions, but also Roth conversions, were such a good idea that even our team, who believes in this, we're doing this for, for tons of folks, were just taken aback by how convicted he was that, no, this is the only option. Guys, that's not one size fits all. It's absolutely something you need to consider right now. And even if you didn't do it last year, doesn't mean you shouldn't do it this year. You, you need to consider it, but it's not one size fits all. There are times when you should not do a Roth conversion. We want to share five of them, and then we'll see if we can come up with any others as well. But the first one is obvious, and that is you're in a high current tax bracket. Now, I'm saying that uh, it, you know high is a, is a relative term. This tax guru even said, even at the highest tax bracket, you should be doing Roth conversions. I, I don't know. So yeah, in, in other words, no one is in a high tax bracket today compared to history. Right. right. And if, if it's true, we, we often say that the tax pendulum is constantly swinging back and forth from low tax rates to high tax rates. And when you look at it with a historical perspective, right now we are on the low end of the spectrum. And that's kind of his argument that this is an opportunity not to be postponing or avoiding taxes. Pay as many taxes as you can right now so that out there in the future, when he would argue tax rates are bound to go back up, you can be avoiding them then when uh, the pain would have been more. And the, and the tricky thing about that is, is since 1994, when I entered this industry, there were people talking about how tax rates are going up. You're going to be paying more tax in retirement than you are while you're working. And tax, you know, folks, a lot of the folks that we worked with were paying 28% on their income tax at the time, they're paying 12% today. Yeah. So, and I mean, it, there, there are a lot of predictions, you know, Social Security won't be around 30 years from now. Well, I'm still around 30 years later and so is Social Security. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I have a sense that it'll probably be around 30 years from now. So there are a lot of things, there, there, there are a lot of uh, boogeymen out there that are, um, they're interesting when you hear them, and when, when someone is talking about that and no one else is, it gets, uh, I'm going to say, disproportionate attention. And so it's, it's, it's interesting. And, and you know, the, our team, as they, you know, what do financial advisors do for a good time? They go into Chicago for the day and sit and listen to people talk about different financial planning concepts yeah, and techniques. Sounds perfect. So, so as, we, as we're sitting there listening, I thought, this guy is a kind of a hero of mine in the industry, and he's not quite right. 
Yeah. He's he's mostly right. He's mm-hmm. just not all the way there. Yeah, so so high tax bracket it currently is relative to you. So if you received a really outsized bonus this year, a couple of them, if you sold in a, a property that you've got a lot of gain to report this year or uh, who knows? Maybe you're in a two-income household, and next year one of you is shifting to part-time, something like that. If you're in a high current tax bracket compared to where you think you'll be, it may not make sense to do a Roth conversion. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into that and then share the other four times you should not do a Roth conversion. That and more coming up on The Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for being here. This is The Wise Money Show. What you're watching right now is our weekly one-hour talk show that airs right here on this channel. 10 a.m. Eastern Time every Saturday morning, also on podcasts at the same time, but also on a couple local radio stations as well, which is why the content's broken up the way that it is. This is a, this is a commercial break for that for the radio stations, and, and it's a talk show, so it's, it's longer. Um, but we have Next Wise Step videos that air all throughout the work week, taking one financial concept, applying it directly to your financial life. We've done, gosh, probably a dozen or more on benefits of the Roth conversion, times when you should consider it, strategies to do to cover the taxes, all that sort of stuff. So if you are, similar to what Kevin said, uh, interested in and in listening to different financial concepts and figuring out how to apply them, you're at the right place. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, you're made aware every time we drop a new content. If you like the content, like the content. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I figured it might be worth, not that we want to meander or get off track, but might be worth just sharing current tax brackets, foreshadowing about the potential um, sunsetting, that sort of thing, as just we we dwell on this tax bracket issue. And then we can go into the next one. So we, do we go into the tax bracket. Do you do anything with... Um, uh, contribution limits or not i don't think so okay. yeah i don't think so i didn't think so i i propose just we testing don't. you see just want to run that up the flagpole see what you guys thought <laughs> all right here we go roth conversion makes uh makes a lot of sense uh it's maybe something you need to consider right now for next year but there are also times when you shouldn't do a Roth conversion. We're pointing those out right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Stay up to date on all Wise Money content. Find us online, wisemoneyshow.com. Then all over social media, wherever you're at, we are there as well. Search the Wise Money Show. Love the Roth conversion. Absolutely love it. I I, uh, I didn't do one this year. I did one last year, the year before, I think, as well, right? We eat our own cooking here. So always looking for opportunities. And, and I, I think even that uh, illustrates that it's not if, if it's appropriate for you to do one year, it might not be appropriate for you to do the next year. Maybe you should do a Roth conversion ladder where you're doing a little bit. You're taking one rung at a time every single year. But there are times when you shouldn't do a Roth conversion. And, and one of those is when you're in a high current tax bracket. Current tax rates after all, you know, all your income minus deductions, a chunk, the first chunk of your taxes or of your income is taxed at 10%. The next chunk is 12%, 22, 24, and then what, 32, and, and, and so on. Now, those are, historically speaking, like we talked about, very low, extremely low. Uh, if the current tax eh, cut and jobs act, I did, tried not to use the term, if it expires, which it's set to sunset at the end of 2025, those tax rates will go up. They won't jump monstrously, but mm-hmm. they will step up a little bit. That's right, because they were low before uh, Trump was elected, before that law was passed, and reduced them even even more. So uh, at the very upper end, just to give you some perspective, if the highest tax rate right now is 37%, it goes back to 39.6% in 2026. So not enormous, but significant. And, you know, if you have high income, that could be an extra uh, two, three percent on a lot of money, potentially. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the point here, though, is that this is something that you need to be considering every single year. And I I like how you pointed out, Mike, at the beginning of the show, that more people are considering a Roth conversion than ever. And my hope would be that you are considering it regularly. 
every year. And you, you said this, that some years it will make sense and some years it won't because your tax bracket, your personal income may be bouncing around a little bit from year to year. And if you happen to have a lower income year because maybe a lot of your income comes from commissions or, or something like that, and your industry is in a little bit of a slump, okay, uh, that, that might not be uh, what you were hoping for, but how do you take advantage of the situation? How do you uh, uh, recognize that maybe you have some room to let your income go higher without jumping into higher and higher brackets? And one way to make your income go higher, kind of artificially or intentionally, would be with this Roth conversion. You take money that's never been taxed before and choose proactively to pay tax on it now so that you never have to pay tax on it again. It's funny, this this IRA guru that we're talking about, he 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 never gives investment advice. And on stage he said, he said, All right, often people ask me what I should invest in, and I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, you should invest in taxes. He was just so <laughs> bullish that <laughs> these rates, these tax rates are low, so pay as much tax as possible at the lowest possible rate. And we use that phrase all the time. And and a Roth conversion is just that. You're not required to do a Roth conversion. You you can continue to let these dollars uh, you know, defer the taxes. But man, if you are in a low tax bracket, you might want to include some of that income this year and 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 so that you never have to pay tax on it again. But again, the, the opposite, if you're in a high tax bracket relative to your situation this year, probably pass on the Roth conversion. Yeah. Yesterday in case class, we were talking about how much income could you have and still be in the 12% tax bracket? And so um, we like to go around and get answers from the youngest to the oldest as far as experience in the room goes, because the old folks in the room know can understand the question. And and if you're married filing jointly, you pay twenty on the first twenty three thousand, you pay ten percent, and from twenty three to ninety four, you pay twelve percent. So everyone, uh, you know, the, the 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 newer folks were saying, well, I could have ninety four thousand three hundred in income and still pay tax at 12%. Well, it's actually not true. Mm -hmm. Because the, and and this is where, if you haven't looked at these numbers lately, they they kind of astound you. Because I I remember when the 12% tax bracket was considerably less. And so you can actually have, if you're married filing jointly, you are in. You have a standard deduction. It's twenty nine thousand three hundred. I know we're not supposed to do math on the radio, yeah. but if I put those two together, I'll have one hundred and twenty three thousand six hundred that I could make. So if I had a, if I had a, if a salary of one hundred and twenty three thousand six hundred, and that's it, nothing else on my tax return, I would um, put that on the top. I would subtract my standard deduction, and I would have all my income taxed in the 12% tax bracket. But it's even more than that, actually, because that that income is after your pre-tax 401k contributions or whatever. So your income could be even higher than that. But so, so here's the idea. You don't need to be a tax expert to figure out whether you should do a Roth conversion. You need to be working with a guide. You need to be working with your certified financial planner who can explain all of this stuff, not so that you can uh, you can understand it perfectly and then pass the quiz, but just so you get it enough to say, yeah, 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 I, 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 I understand what you're saying. And then here's the strategy that makes sense. Yeah, 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 I can see that. So, all right, second, second time when you should pass on a Roth conversion, you should not do a Roth conversion, is when you are under age 59 and a half and you don't have the cash, the funds, to pay the taxes. Kevin, when you were explaining the Roth conversion earlier and you know gets into like uh, splitting hairs and all that, you said when you're doing a Roth conversion, money's coming out of your IRA and it goes into the Roth and, and it's taxed when it goes into the Roth. It's actually taxed when it comes out of the IRA. Yeah, and that's the, what I said. The, and the, the tricky thing is if you, because this is a taxable maneuver, you've got to pay tax on this. Well, how do you pay the tax? You could withhold, meaning you take simple terms, 10 grand out of your out of your IRA, withhold two grand, 20% to taxes, so two grand goes to Uncle Sam, and then eight grand shows up in your Roth. Well, that two grand came out of your IRA and didn't land in your Roth. If you're over age 59 and a half, no problem. It's taxable, no big deal. If you're under age 59 and a half, 
that two grand is technically treated as an as a distribution and an early a pre retirement early withdrawal mm-hmm. and, and therefore not only taxed but also penalized. That's right. And that's a popular strategy, by the way. Whether you are doing a Roth conversion or you're in retirement and you're drawing off of your IRA, a lot of people like to let the IRA pay the tax, essentially. And having it withheld, as you described it, Mike, is just a way of saying, as I pull money out of the IRA, I want some of it coming to me and some of it going to the tax man to, to pay the, the tax on this, on this bill, essentially. And a, as you're describing, if you use that strategy when you're younger than age 59 and a half, the money that goes to pay the taxes is potentially, it, it's probably going to be penalized. Yeah. And, um, and, and that's something just to be aware of, right? That a, a 10% penalty that's unnecessary, I'd call that waste, right? It's yeah. dollars slipping through the cracks. And so if you're under age 59 and a half and you're considering doing a Roth conversion, one of the, the decisions that you have to make is how are we gonna cover the tax? And this is where if you've got some extra cash that you wanna do something great for your retirement goal with, One option is to contribute it straight to the Roth IRA, as Kevin was describing at the beginning of the the show. That's one way to get money into a Roth. Or you could use maybe those same dollars and uh, instead use them to pay the tax on a Roth conversion. It's just another way for you to do something wise, something smart, something forward thinking with this money that enhances or improves your, your retirement outlook. More money in the Roth IRA puts you in a stronger position. And uh, if you've got some extra cash, using it to pay the tax when you're under age 59 and a half can be a really smart thing. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have those resources, if you're looking and saying, I'm 45 and yeah, I think I'll be in a higher tax bracket in the future. I think I'm in a low tax bracket now. I'm going to do a Roth conversion and you don't have the cash to pay the taxes. Yeah, like you, you, it might not be. It might be a reason to pass on the Roth conversion. It might be a good idea, but one that you shouldn't implement. Now, if you've got a big tax refund, maybe you use that tax refund to pay the tax on on the Roth conversion, and your CFP can help you quantify then how much Roth conversion to do, and 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 so on. But you need to be aware of this potential penalty on withholdings. All right, a few other reasons, times not to do Roth conversions. That more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Did the did Winston get on the oh, camera? Sure. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> See, he wants to sit on my lap. That's he's he, he, and <laughs> lap he, dog. He actually doesn't understand right now. Like he's like, Dad, what are we talking about? Like, <laughs> Can't okay. you see the cameras? <laughs> the lights. So this is so not normal. So the the um so. How, how would you communicate if you have money that's never had taxes paid on it? You want to have a strategy. I'm sure most people don't think like this, um, but you and I don't spend a lot of time thinking about this for my own situation. But I need to have a strategy for getting the taxes paid at some point somehow. The easiest thing to do is say, uh, "Not my problem." Mm-hmm. Like it will be the. The 67-year-old version of me, the 75-year-old version of me, the uh, the offspring version of me, like it's someone else's problem. Mm-hmm. But I do think that that real time, you should say, "Hey, should I pay any taxes today on those dollars?" A lot of times, the answer is just gonna be no. All right, well, just keep doing that check, but periodically, it it, it you're gonna get a yes answer in there. Mm-hmm. What is it? What's the saying? The only certainty in life is death and taxes, or something like that. Uh, so, so right. I mean, it, but but we're all. I don't know what it is about the human condition, or at least with taxes. I have a propensity of saying, "No, oh, that's someone else's problem as well." It could be my future self's problem. And I don't even think. I don't think that's what we think. I think it's either not my problem or not my problem now. And it mm-hmm. and and so for a lot of people, if you and I I'm throw me in that camp. If you can tell me it's not my problem now, I'm like sweet. I have plenty of problems. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go focus on something else. Now. <laughs> Let me get after those. Yeah. So, all right, third segment. I don't know if there's anything more we want to hit with the second one. No, or not. No, okay. I think that dead horse has been beaten. Got yeah. it. And then it's downtown. Rolled over. Mm. 
that's 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 two horse that's, analogies that already. Like yeah, horses on the brain early. today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Are you aware of the tax credits that you're currently getting and why you're getting them? And 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 if so, then you have a chance of ensuring that you don't do something that that accidentally causes you to lose those tax credits. We're helping with that right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Cohorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Cohorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on podcast. Wherever you listen, just search the Wise Money Show. Subscribe to it there. Rate the program there as well. You can share it also. We appreciate that. This is the worst intro I think I've ever done. Tax credit, tax credit, tax credit. It sounds really boring. What we're talking about right now is times when you should not do a Roth conversion. Huge fans of the Roth, of the Roth conversion. It's not one size fits all. There are times when it's a good idea, but you need to pass on it. And the third time, the third reason why you should not do a Roth conversion in a particular year is if doing so is going to cause you to lose out on some tax credits that you were normally going to get. Josh, you've got a good definition for tax credit. So let's anchor the the conversation. Yeah, because again, it's not something that most people think about and maybe don't understand the terminology, but it's something that you do have to know because this is one of your most important tax planning concepts. As you're projecting out where your income is going to land each year, you need to figure out, am I eligible for any tax credits, which are Basically, after you have done all the work to total up your income, take any tax write-offs that you can, boil it down to a taxable amount of income, and then we calculate what is your tax, then tax credits come into play. And tax credits are amazing because after you've calculated your tax, they eliminate tax dollars, just eliminate dollar for dollar right off of the, the tax bill itself and reduce what you end up having to pay. And so tax credits are something that you wanna know, am I eligible for them? Is there anything I could do to make myself eligible for them? Mm-hmm. And it is possible that inadvertently, not you know, n- not on purpose, but by mistake, sometimes people do things with their income that cause them to become ineligible for, for tax credits. And it's usually because you've crept too high on your income, um, you, you allowed your income to get up to a certain threshold that n- no longer these credits are available to you. And so what that means is uh, dollars start going back on your tax return where they could have been eliminated. A Roth conversion is one of the ways that you increase your income on a tax return. You just have to be careful to not take it too high. Yeah, I, when I think of tax planning, I think of optimizing my tax situation and you're you really, Josh, what you're talking about is what I would call a tag along tax. And you're like, well, what is this tag along tax that you're referring to? Well, it, it can occur in a couple of different ways. If I do a Roth conversion, um, from the moment that money leaves my traditional IRA, it will be taxed. <laughs> Therefore, it will be after tax money going into my Roth IRA. Nailed it. Uh, okay, right. thank Thanks you. Thanks for clarifying. Uh, thank you very little. So, <laughs> so based on that, that is more income that's going to show up on my tax return. And the question is, is that going to do one of two things? One thing, it could bring more income with it. So if I'm taking Social Security and none of my Social Security is taxable, I do a Roth conversion and I bring some Social Security over into the taxable zone. So that would be one way that that can happen. So I'm paying taxes on income that I normally wouldn't be paying taxes on. But the other way is I I lock myself out of or I get out of the range of being eligible for a credit or a deduction. Now, some mm-hmm. people call those write-offs. I, I don't know where they get that. I would always refer to that as a deduction. <laughs> uh, uh, so you have you, you have deductions or credits that yeah. you would um, be prevented from getting. So this is where tax planning is so important. And it's so important to get it done before the end of the year. I mean, as you're listening to this, you're, you don't have a ton of time left before the end of the year to make sure you've optimized your tax plan for 2024. And I would say, run, don't walk to a planner. Make sure they're certified and your certified financial planner can help you with your tax plan. Josh, before you, you jump in, just I want you to know that we are going to be doing our annual tax year-end tax planning show coming up in a couple of weeks. 
you're going to hear us say, maybe consider a Roth conversion. Like for all <laughs> the reasons we're telling you why you might not, you still have to look at it every single year and determine, is this a strategy I should do or not? And you have until 1231 to do it. All right, I cut you off, Josh. Well, no, I was just going to point out that in so many words, what Kevin was describing is why it's important to not just pay attention to what tax bracket you're in mm-hmm. when you're doing a Roth conversion. Your certified financial planner when they're doing the analysis on whether this makes sense, they're not just looking, hey, can we convert some money from your traditional IRA to your Roth inside the 12% bracket? Let's go right up to the upper edge. They are calculating what is the effective impact upon the tax return if you do this transaction. And you might just say, well, the the impact is if I add another dollar of income, I'm in the 12% bracket, so I'm gonna pay 12 cents in tax, right? No, it's possible that you end up paying much more than 12 cents because of those goodies that you give up by doing the Roth conversion. So the the certified financial planner is helping you understand what is the effective tax rate on this transaction. And you want to make sure that you're not just charging forward blindly and doing a Roth conversion because you're in a tax bracket where it seems like it makes sense. Still do the math, do the analysis, don't cut corners on this. Make sure that it does make sense for you. Just a couple honorable mention tax credits to be looking out for. Our our favorite, my favorite tax credit, retirement savers tax credit, because this is you're getting an extra tax benefit, a credit like like we taught, like we explained what it was, um, for doing what you should be doing anyway, saving up for mm-hmm. retirement. Now your income has to be below certain thresholds, and the lower your income is, the greater this tax credit. Oftentimes, you're getting a retirement tax credit right at the beginning of your career, where maybe you're not earning a ton. You're you're kind of building up your human capital uh, and in order to earn more in the future. And when you're saving for retirement, like when you're young, that is a time when you should be doing a Roth conversion when you're young. But if if you look and, and have blinders on or don't do the proactive planning, you could lose out on this retirement savers tax credit. So either at the beginning of your career or the end of your career, American Opportunity Tax Credit. As tax credits, when you've got kiddos going to college, helps you with tuition. So this is sort of middle of your career. Oh, I think my income's still on the way up. I'll do a Roth conversion and then whammo, all of a sudden you realize, oh my goodness, wait, I didn't get that $2,500 tax credit that I got the previous year, oops. But then the biggie, the biggie biggie is the advanced premium tax credits that you get if you buy your health insurance through healthcare.gov. Affordable Care Act. This is what it was. Uh, what it was tucked into. So, what's affordable? And and I don't want to get too deep in the weeds here. But through this, through that law, essentially somewhere in the five to nine percent of your income is deemed affordable for you to be spending on health insurance. And if you are buying your health insurance through healthcare.gov and you're the premium for that health insurance is greater than those percentages, five to 9%, then you get a tax credit in advance to bring your premium, the amount you pay every single month, lower so it's into that range. Well, if you do a Roth conversion, now your income's higher. So five to 9% of a higher number is a higher amount that quote unquote, you could afford to pay for your health insurance and those numbers stack up really, really quickly, where all of a sudden you do a little Roth conversion and you have to pay a lot of these tax credits back on your tax return. Doesn't mean it's something you absolutely shouldn't do, but you just need to be aware of it because it's a slippery slope. Anything yeah. to add with that, guys? Nope. Make sense? Nope. That is that. These are the, the, the gotchas that you find out at tax time. Mm-hmm. And if you've ever looked and you said, oh, I owe $10,000 in taxes, how can that be? That's the $10,000 advanced premium tax credit that you got. Now, I will add one other thing, because oftentimes if you're not doing the proactive tax planning where you've created a, a projection, a mock tax return, you might do this Roth conversion and not realize that you're going to give up some of these tax credits. And so just to be clear, You find this out when you prepare your return late February or into March or whatever, and you might say, "Uh uh-oh, I did too much Roth conversion. I wish I wouldn't have done that. It used to be that you could undo it. You could do a recharacterization, and and you might still remember doing that in the past, but you need to know those rules have changed. 
There is no mulligan anymore with Roth conversions. There is no, uh, I let me re- reverse time and undo some of this. So you've got to be more precise. You used to be able to do this undo, this recharacterization of a Roth conversion up until your tax filing deadline. Not anymore. So you got to be precise. You've got to do that tax planning up front. All right. Other times to not do a Roth conversion. That more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Yeah, we had a minute left, and I'm like, I'm not going to get into yeah, the next it's one. Kind of no man's land, huh? So wait, I are we've got fourth and fifth remaining. Yep, four segment. Okay. Somehow, and I, I was I was thinking it would be good to have the full four segment to explain the last one, Irma, because that's that can be a little complicated, but uh, we'll have to hit two of them. So the fourth one, maybe we just won't spend a bunch of time on, and I think that's fine. Um, note that. So it's just, is the point of the fourth one just to say that your RMD cannot be doesn't a Roth count con- towards, yeah. 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 Or it's, Roth conversion doesn't count towards the RMD. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I would say it cannot be a Roth conversion. Your RMD cannot be a Roth conversion. Correct. And I, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to nitpick at how you phrased it at the beginning. No, so. it, no, it is. I, I, I do think. It's because it'd be easy to be confused. Yeah, but you're right. As soon as the money comes out of the traditional IRA, boom, it's taxable. Now I'm saying it's as soon as it comes out, it's standing at the door of the Roth IRA. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's almost one in the same. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So here we go. And I don't know if you wanted to. Anyone wanted to have those Irma limits up, but just know like they're changing in just a couple of months. So. All right, here we go. Four segment, land the plane. Thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on the YouTube channel, as well as a lot of other content. Well over a thousand videos now. So go to YouTube, search the Wise Money Show, subscribe to it, turn on notifications, so you're made aware every time we drop new content. And gosh, curious about the Roth IRA, curious about Roth conversions. We've done well over a dozen videos uh, and, and lots of content helping you break down how to cover the taxes, when to do it, what what are some times, again, so going deeper on some of these uh, these times when you shouldn't do a Roth conversion. So go to YouTube, search the Wise Money Show, subscribe to it there. Hitting the five times, there's more than this, but the top five times when you should not do a Roth conversion. Good idea, but one that you should pass on for that year. This fourth one is... Doing a Roth conversion when you're in your required minimum distribution years, but doing it before you do your RMD. And and those of you that are longtime listeners of the Wise Money Show, you say, yeah, yeah, I know this already, but but we we need to hit it because it, it can be confusing, especially if you're in a period early in retirement where you're doing Roth conversion every year, uh, like many of you should. Once you get to that required beginning date, so the year when you have to start taking required minimum distributions from your IRA, you can still do Roth conversions. You can. You just have to take your required minimum distribution first. You have to do it first. And you might say, well, if I do both, can it, you know, I'm sure that's fine, right? No, it's not fine. You have to do the RMD, the required minimum distribution first. So when's that required beginning date? 73. Unless you're born in, what is it, 1960 or after, then it's 75, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I don't have it right in front of me, but I believe that's the case. So 75 is your required beginning date. So you got a lot of time, but just know that you got to do your uh, your required minimum distribution first. The strategy then for a lot of people is, okay, for you, it still makes sense to do a Roth conversion. Let's use as much of your required minimum distribution to cover the taxes so we'll take your RMD, we'll withhold all of it for taxes, and then do a big Roth conversion after that where we don't need to withhold the taxes, and that gives you even more money that lands in your Roth. This seems like such a reasonable mistake that people could make. You know, if, if the government is saying that at a certain age, uh, you've had this money kind of hiding out in a traditional IRA for so long, we eventually want to be able to tax you on this money. So we're going to make you start pulling money out each year. That's the required minimum distribution that Mike was was talking about. Well, when you pull money out of a traditional IRA, 
and do a Roth conversion, you are taking money out of the IRA. You're paying the tax just like the government wants you to do, but then you're moving it into a Roth IRA. And it's that last piece that they don't like. Uh, they, they don't want you to do your required minimum distribution and then go hide the money again in a Roth IRA where it's out of reach again, right? So they, they want to make sure that money is coming out of the IRA, being taxed, and then staying out of a tax shelter is, is the idea. Once you have satisfied that distribution, that required minimum distribution, then it's back to normal tax planning for you. It's, it's deciding all over again, is this a year where I want to do even more money pulled out of the traditional IRA, but now I want it to go into the Roth where it can grow tax-free for the rest of my life and, and beyond. And I know this is a different show, but uh, I do love y- using the qualified charitable distribution to satisfy mm-hmm. oh, yeah. my yep. required minimum distribution. And that's, but that's not it's a for great today. strategy. It is a fantastic strategy. All right, last one. And, and this is a biggie. This is a biggie. The, the fifth time you should pass, you should not do a Roth conversion, is if it causes you to pay. IRMA, an income-related monthly adjustment amount. Now, this one is tricky as well, but let's first explain what IRMA is. Your Medicare Part B and Part D premiums are based on, what you pay for those is based on your income, adjusted gross income, modified adjusted gross income, not from the current year because you're paying it ongoing, not from the previous year because your taxes aren't done yet, but from the prior, prior year, two Mm -hmm. years ago. So you're doing a Roth conversion in a year, and yet you don't know two years later whether that's going to push your income into a threshold where now you have to pay more for your Medicare Part B and Part D. So it's a, it's it's a it's it's very very confusing, but you need to be aware of this because this is an additional cost or an additional penalty or an additional tax on doing a Roth conversion that you want to avoid. Yes, this is a biggie rest in peace. Um, I do think (laughs) when you look at this prior, prior, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, So, Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going into the doesn't make any sense land. And so we've been there actually, Kevin, appreciate that, but we've been there all. Well, we're going deeper (laughs) into the never doesn't make any sense forest. And so as you look at this, I mean, the, the, to me, the, the best example of this is I had a client who was a newer client and was kind of had been operating on their own, doing their own thing. And they said, wait a minute, my my Medicare Part B premium is more. I'm paying more for that. Why am I paying more for that? And I knew what his income was. And I said, well, you, you shouldn't be. Let's figure that out. Well, what he had done is he t- decided he wanted a car. And a lot of times for retirees, they say, when I want a car, I want a car. This is the last car I'm ever going to buy. I don't want to have payments. I want to have it with ca- I'm gonna buy it with cash. So where am I going to get the cash? Well, I'm going to pull 50 grand out of my IRA. Well, if it's a $50,000 car, I'm pulling 80 grand out of my IRA. Well, if I'm pulling 80 grand out of my IRA, that goes on my tax return. And that may m- push me into Irma land. And if I have that, the first step is an extra $70 per month, per person for For Irma. So this is where I've, you know, that's where I would refer to this as one of those tag along taxes. And it's, it's, I would call it a stealth tag along tax, Mm -hmm. except um, you actually will see it when you get the letter from uh, the Stealth stealth because you're not going to remember it. You're you're going to realize, wait a second, wait, uh, you know, this was two years ago. Why am I getting this? Something has to be wrong. So what's your approach on that? Like when you're working with clients to figure out how high should I go with a Roth conversion, are you taking them up to this year's IRMA limits and then just counting on two years from now the IRMA limits being a little bit higher because of inflation? Is that kind of your your approach? It depends on the circumstance, but I love the 22% tax bracket. I, I just, I think, I, I mean, I, I like the 12% tax bracket better, but for a lot of folks that have a lot of wealth where we've done the planning and said, hey, the odds of you running out of money is really low and your RMDs are gonna be significant, I'm doing Roth conversions to get into the 22% tax bracket. But if you go all the way to the top of the 22% tax bracket, then you're past this IRMA limit. Mm-hmm. So yes, I'm going to basically the 2024 IRMA limit, expecting that it's going to go up a little bit Mm -hmm. by 2026, and we'll have a little bit of cushion. 
but you won't know for sure what those well, limits are until sometime late in 2025, yep, right? Yeah. When they post them again for the the upcoming year. That's the tricky part about all of this strategy and it's it's the reason why you don't want to just charge forward with what we would say is a good idea. You everybody should be considering a Roth conversion, but everyone in the consideration needs to be analyzing and optimizing how much should I do? Is this the year to do it? It's it's not an absolute yes every year for everybody. Yeah. And and it's very possible also that you are looking at your financial situation and for whatever reason you're looking and saying in the future I'm going to be paying Irma. There's there's no way around it. My circumstance is such that I'm going to be above these thresholds and it may make sense then for you to do a Roth conversion and really I mean go for it to limit or reduce the Irma you'll pay in the future because you're already subject to it. So the point is planning. And really, guys, as we wrap up the show, the, the, the point for all of this is getting proactive about your tax picture. You can only do a, Ro- a Roth conversion by getting proactive. There's no there's no reactive way to do it because you've got to do it within 1231 before you know your full picture. So you have to project out, here's where I think I'm at financially and, and proactively, I'm going to pay some tax today instead of letting it continue to defer. Our process, our approach, the approach that we'd recommend for you to get proactive with your tax picture is in the fall or in the summer or spring, if you've got a geeky financial advisor like us, uh, building out a projected tax picture. We call it a tax projection. And and oftentimes coupling that with a multi-year tax projection so you can really forecast it out, maybe going out all the way to your required minimum distribution so you can see life will change tax rates will change, tax planning will change, but based on everything we know right now, what's it gonna look like for you? And that can help inform, that visibility, that planning can help inform whether you should be doing Roth conversions today and whether you should delay them or avoid them or pass. So work with your CFP on that. All right, that's all the time we have for today. We have Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, all of us at Corhorn Financial Group. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.